And for the introduction, but also to say thanks to Carolyn and, and various colleagues at the IAR for supporting us through the uh, production and, and then the publication of the, of the report. Much appreciated. There are, I suppose, a couple of reasons why it might seem an odd point at which to um, launch a publication which is in many ways a sustained critique of HSE enforcement practice, although we'll qualify that in a moment. The first reason is that just a couple of weeks ago, in the last day of June, June the 30th, HSC released, uh, put out a press release which had uh, fatality figures for its most recent year, 2009-2010, and that press release um, signalled that fatal, fatal injuries at work were, quote, at a record low. So in a sense, one might ask what we're worried about. The record low was 151 deaths uh, for 2009-2010, and of course we should be grateful for that because each one of those figures is a person and a family. Having said that, the press release made no mention of the 393 members of the public that were killed in that year, reported by the HSC and the Riddle. It made no mention of, of uh, several other categories of occupational fatalities collected under the Riddle. It made no mention of the 1,100 people killed in road traffic fatalities whilst at work, driving whilst at work as a normal part of their employment in any one year. It, may, it did refer, it does refer in publications, it didn't refer in the press release, it does refer in publications to an estimated 8,000 occupational cancer deaths a year, but it doesn't refer to the many other occupational diseases, which uh, a, a reasonable estimate uh, uh, calculates kills up to 50,000 people from work in this country every year. So, if one were feeling less generous, one would say there may be a slight hand on the part of HSC. If one were feeling more generous, one may say this is good presentation management on the part of HSC to talk about 151 people killed. It also didn't mention that press release. A report by the UK Statistics Authority in May 2010, a month before, which said, and I quote, statistics on work-related injuries and fatalities exclude those injuries that take place on the roads, in the air, at sea, and exclude the armed forces. It is not always made clear in the presentation of the statistics which, which fatalities are omitted. HSC does not, it said, produce an overall figure for work-related work fatalities in Great Britain and went on to conclude, Recommendation 8, Requirement 8, that HSC should investigate the feasibility of producing stats on the total number of work-related work -related injuries and fatalities, including those not reported under RIN. A second reason why this may seem an odd point at which to launch a kind of critical report about some practice of the HSE is that, as Carolyn indicated, clearly the HSE has been singled out for special uh, focus uh, by Cameron's appointment of Lord Young in his review of regulation, health and safety regulation, and the compensation of culture. Lord Young, as Carolyn intimated, being the, uh, the head of Mrs. Thatcher's deregulation of contracts and out unit in 1986, and, uh, with whom I had the pleasure of sitting down and interviewing the PhD student. Lord Young is not soft on health and safety. HSC also faced a difficult time in the context of public sector funding cuts. So this is in many respects a poor time to launch a critical report on HSC, and I say that because the report is squarely behind the work of inspectors on the ground who wish to enforce the law. It's squarely behind the idea of the health and safety detective. What is critical of is the strategy over a 10 to 13 year period, a flawed strategy, of HSC senior management, which has left it precisely vulnerable to the kind of reviews which it now faces. The third point to make, and Carolyn's already kind of intimated this is a contextual point now, is that the publication is based upon a thoroughgoing analysis of HSC's internal data, most of which gen is generated through freedom of information requests. And I'll take you through that data very, very boldly at the moment, and by ending other today to make some analytical concluding points. Statistics, of course, do not always tell the whole story. Statistics, as I've already intimated, can be used to present a rather different version of reality than that which really exists. So the document does not rely upon statistics. The document is based upon, again, over 13 years since the, uh, since the election of New Labour in 1997. That's the time frame uh, which we use in the, in, the, uh, in the pamphlet. The document is based upon close attention to government policy documents, HSC policy documents, internal briefings, position papers to the board, board meetings, board, uh, board, meeting, board meeting minutes, and so on. So there is a quantitative, statistical, and a qualitative uh, level of analysis in the pamphlet or booklet, 
And the key thought point, I think, is that all of those indicators point towards the same direction, the direction which ends up with us having a title, regulatory surrender. The context, which I'll refer to very, very briefly, is that, the, that something kind of happened. Something happened. The document, of course, tries to clarify that. But for now, it's OK to say something happened around the time of New Labour's second term of office, around 2001. Roughly something happened in terms of New Labour's strategy towards the regulation of business in particular, and New Labour's real policy relationship with HSE, and its, uh, and its uh, 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 preferences in terms of the forms of enforcement. We see this rolled out particularly through the Hampton 2004-2005 reviews, the McCrory review of Sevenson and the Rogers review, uh, which sought to implement Hampton through the local authorities. I won't go into this in detail, the booklet does, but you'll be familiar with these kinds of, uh, uh, these kinds of reviews in any case. In a sense, the key thing which has been rolled out since 2001 is our various forms of market-based forms of regulation. Reliance upon the social responsibility of business, reliance upon the business case for safety, reliance upon effective leadership in safety. BP was one of the, uh, one of the examples on HSE website uh, of best practice in leadership and management and health and safety, only taken down after a struggle with hazards earlier this year. And the idea of a common interest between um, employers and employees in the more effective management of safety. And these tendencies, we argue in the booklet, have undermined the idea of regulation as enforcement. Not the idea of regulation in general, but the idea of the enforcement of law through particular forms of enforcement techniques, prosecution, prohibition notices, enforce, uh, improvement notices. So, we began the report by looking at publicly available data. The publicly available data in, in uh, HSE prosecutions allow us, uh, in HSE uh, data publications, allows us to track prosecutions over this period. The local authority uh, line down the bottom there is for other purposes. But if we take the, 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 the trend in prosecutions across the piece, from 97 through to the present period, we have a decline in prosecutions by 33%. If we take the trend from the peak, the point I made somewhere around 2001, that kind of peak in the blue line at the top, we see a decline to the present day of about 48% in prosecutions by the Health and Safety Executive. We see a fairly similar tail, fairly similar kind of shape and set of lines if we look at enforcement notices. The blue line at the top are improvement notices. It's the least serious form of formal enforcement action that HSC can take. And in fact, across the piece we find a slight rise in enforcement no and improvement notices of about 10%. If we look at the prohibition notices, the red line at the bottom, we see a decline over the piece. These are both through relatively low, num low numbers, as you can see, or hopefully see uh, from the left hand, the vertical axis. But again, if we, f if we isolate the trends from that peak, these are a little bit later, 2002 to 2003, we see a decline in improvement notices, the blue line, by 40%, and the decline in prohibition notices, the red line, by 37%. Then if we look at another practice of HSE investigations, and now we're starting to drill down into data generated by freedom of information requests, and it's more interesting than that, I think we would argue. Here if we look at the number of injuries and deaths that HSE investigates, we find a decline over the piece, this data goes back to 99-2000, in some cases the data isn't compatible back to 97-98. We find a decline of 63%, but again, we see a peak, this time around 2000-2001, the kind of top of, that, top, top of that blue line there, and if we chart that through to the present day, we see a decline in investigations of riddle reported injuries and fatalities, a limited number of injuries and fatalities, a decline of 69%. Again, if we look at inspection records, another element of HSE activity, actually getting out into the workplace and carrying out investigations. If we look back across the piece, back to 1999-2001, we see a decline, it's fairly clear, through to present day of 63% in the inspection records. Now importantly, HSE indicates, and it's definitely the case, that the ways in which inspections were conducted and recorded changed in 2004-2005. So in a sense, the data prior to 2004-2005, the back and midpoint on that graph, is not entirely compatible with the data that follows it. If we were to, be, if we were to, 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 to take that at face value, and there's no reason why we shouldn't take the idea of longer and deeper inspections, um, as HSE put it seriously, 
then we find a decline from that midpoint, 2004-2005, to the present day, in inspections, of 26%. And so they've declined by about a quarter in that latter period. And it's worth noting, in fact, that Hampton, the Hampton report in 2005 called for a reduction of, up to, uh, of inspections across 65 regulatory bodies by up to a third. And on that basis, HSE have almost achieved that figure. Again, if we drill down into the kinds of incidents, the kinds of injuries that are reported that have been investigated, or rather not been investigated, we find a very similar kind of set of patterns. The blue line at the top of major injuries, amputations, major burns and blindings, and so on and so forth. The red line in the middle is over three day injuries, and the green line at the bottom are dangerous occurrences. Those uh, are events which are dangerous, reportable, but do not result in an injury or injury. Again, we find declines across that period. Again, we find a peak in about 2001. And again, lastly, before I hand over to Dave, if we look at riddle reported deaths, so that the equivalent of 151 I mentioned earlier, the headline figure in the press release, uh, it's historically, or uh, historically recently, kind of bubbled around the 200, just under or just over number of deaths. So a very, very small number of the actual level of deaths uh, which occur in relation to work in Britain every year. But if we look at that small percentage of deaths and then look at how many of those result in prosecution, we find uh, between 1999 to 2007, we stop at 2007 because clearly some deaths take more than a year, two, three years to, to uh, end up in a prosecution. Uh, we find a kind of peak in the middle uh, to, between about 2002 to 2004, but across the piece we see a decline in 39% in the levels of uh, deaths which are investigated. That point I'll hand over to you.